welcome you today to our final day you know, of our executive summit. And uh, we have a really good lineup today. I'm glad you stayed. It's really uh, something that uh, I think is a strong part uh, of our summit. It's been a five-year plan that we've worked with Cognizant to develop a really comprehensive study that uh, that uh, Shannon Warner, um, who uh, is uh, going to be coming up here uh, and has worked with me on this study for all five years, and uh, really a terrific view of 2,400 um, shoppers uh, and an in-depth survey. It's one of those surveys that finds out likes as well as dislikes. And there's a way to interpret the data so that retailers can find out um, the gaps that they need to close, the opportunities they might find. This year we have titled the theme of the message, The Vital Importance of Wearing Customer Shoes. And I think that there will be some aha moments. So why do we do this study? It's really important to understand what customers like and dislike so that we can be relevant to them, so that we can inform our business strategies so that we're targeting what they want and what they don't want. And the reason it matters to you is because every year you're faced with needing to prioritize how you are going to invest your limited resources. And we think that understanding the voice of the customer is the most important thing in prioritizing those investments. So I've said this before, if any of you guys have heard me speak before, that retail has been the same for hundreds of years. It's, exchange, it's an exchange of value for value. Customers want product and service in exchange for their patronage. That hasn't changed and that will never change in retail. That's, that is the heart of retail. But what's changed and what's changed more in the last five years, I think, than ever in retail history is how we deliver on that price, product, and service. Understanding what it is that your customers want, putting, the, putting yourself in their shoes, that, that is, that's the key to all of it. It's all about the customer. It's customer first. Everything we, should, we do should be centered on the customer. And each one of these experiences are about delivering that better customer experience. So the first topic uh, is mobile. And I think that mobile is the most important channel. It is the most important thing that each and every one of us in this room need to get right. Clearly, um, shoppers more and more are using mobile to make purchases. In fact, 49% reported that they've made a purchase in the last year using a mobile device. In fact, 9% of their specialty purchases and 4% of their consumable purchases were made using a mobile device. But satisfaction is lagging. So, so we have mobile experiences out there. Customers are clearly using them. But customers are not satisfied with the mobile experiences that we're providing them. We're not making it easy for them to use mobile to enhance that shopper experience. So the second topic is social media. Um, it wasn't too long ago that the buzz was social commerce, right? And several of us went and experimented and built stores on Facebook and tried to generate sales dollars through social. And very loud and clear, we heard from customers that they just don't care. Um, but it doesn't mean that shoppers aren't engaged in social. 83% use social on a regular basis, and Pinterest and, and Facebook, um, not surprisingly, lead the pack in that area. But what we heard in our shopper study this year is that they just don't want you there. They don't want businesses to invade that space. That's their personal space to network with their friends and their family. It's not a place for them to do business. In fact, 86% of them said that they simply aren't influenced to make a purchase based on any interaction that happens on social. And a full 80% of them said that they simply don't want retailers to be there. They don't care if you have a social media presence. Uh, Joe commented on this edgy picture. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what personalization is. It's a little edgy. Um, retailers want to use personalization, right? Because we're, we're lured by the power that, that has been yielded through really great examples, the great return on, on investment of, of personalization. Because shoppers do respond to personalization, we have the hard numbers that show that they respond to personalization, but they're just not sure about it. 
So you really need to tread lightly. They are very concerned about getting spammed. They're concerned about getting more irrelevant information. And they're concerned about you compromising their privacy and their security as a result of them trusting. Yeah, so how do you get personalized with customers? How do you deliver relevant information? And a lot of people are talking here, and uh, you know, recently, the last few months, uh, maybe even since January, you know, about iBeacons. And uh, iBeacons have that capability. And I know probably not many people here have actually rolled out any tests yet, but uh, Alex and Annie has. And Alex and Annie is a jewelry chain that uh, we had speak at uh, our uh, April event, and maybe they rolled out to all 40 of their stores uh, an iBeacon capability that delivers, that identifies customers once they opt in. It's an opt-in program. And uh, when they opt in, um, they are tracked uh, locally uh, uh, through micro-location throughout the store and delivered uh, marketing messages based on their exact location in the store. And uh, the information that, uh, that we have on that is that once that message is delivered, they have a 75% engagement rate. And engagement rate means that the message was received, it was then either opened, which is part of engagement, you want that to happen, they've at least read it, or opened and acted upon. So getting a 75% engagement for any kind of marketing message is, is really high. So of the six things we're talking about this morning, buy online, pick up in store has had the biggest step change in the last 12 months. It's, it's really making a difference and customers are really responding. Um, over half of the shoppers who responded to the survey have used buy online, pick up in store um, and, and used it more than once. But the, the challenge here is that 50% of the shoppers who use buy online, pick up in store had service failures. They are experiencing um, issues with policies, issues with failed commitments, issues with ill-trained associates. In general, they are, they are experiencing negative things with your brand as a result of this new capability, buy online, pick up in store. Pier One uh, developed a program um, that uh, it has to do with a comprehensive way to look at omnichannel offerings, but it's focused on buy online, pick up in store. And uh, when you go to the website or go to the mobile site and you say, I'm interested in this product, uh, and let them know your uh, zip code, it'll show you all of the stores within a designated you know, uh, perimeter. So if you've designated 25 miles or 50 miles, it'll show you all of those stores, all of the contact information, uh, how many of those products they have in that store. It has a map and directions to get to that store. And then with one click, now all of a sudden you're in contact with that store and you can begin the process of reserving it. And, uh, and now you're engaged with uh, enabling your pickup. So that program, uh, since it's been rolled out, now accounts for 15% of total business uh, at uh, Pier 1. Loyalty. Um, lo loyalty is uh, unique among the six topics in that um, it, it's something that customers want and it's something that retailers want. We, we all benefit um, from loyalty programs. Um, and what's interesting in this year's study is that we were able to compare uh, loyalty programs and, and customer satisfaction and level of engagement and influence with loyalty programs in retail uh, versus the travel industry. And, and we found very clearly that retailers are lagging. 82% said that they are heavily influenced by by loyalty programs, and 75% of shoppers belong to at least one loyalty program, with many belonging to more than 10. It's so key, but I just want to point out, if you're going to take one thing away from this morning session, uh, it is this finding on, uh, on loyalty. If 87% uh, of shoppers you know, get influence and, and, and respect and, and use their loyalty programs for travel uh, industries, and less than half of that do that for retailers, I mean, that's a finding for you. And that's something that you can focus on, I think, take, take home and, and work on. Your customers want it, they're not getting it, here's a gap for you to fill. Um, but the uh, target red card, uh, based on convenience and simplicity, just absolutely perfect. Um, it's a check card or a, a uh, credit card <clears throat> that customers use, and every time they use it, they immediately get a 5% off. No thinking, immediate savings, they, uh, there's no minimum, there's no maximum, 
They have other benefits too, like an extra 30 days for returning uh, uh, products, and uh, it's just quick, easy, simple. It works. It's highly successful. They, uh, customers get something they want. Target gets all that data. It's a win-win. Our sixth topic is customer service, and, and I purposely put this one last because um, you know there are there are three basics we talked about it earlier: price, product, and service. Um, and customer service is really really important, um, and and really really hard to do. Um, what we um, heard from customers is that they have extremely high expectations um, for customer service and their loyalty is directly tied to the level of customer service that they receive. Um, one of the aspects of customer service that I found incredibly interesting in this year's results is the level of um, appreciation for self-service. Um, anecdotally, I hear that customers hate self-service, but what we heard in the study is that a full 67% of shoppers actually prefer self-service. They like it when retailers offer self-service options, with one of the bigger reasons being um, they hate waiting in lines. So if they have to exchange waiting in line for self-service, they're going to choose self-service every day. Um, again, we compared the results of uh, customer satisfaction with self-service experience in retail versus um, other industries and found that you know, there's an area of improvement for everybody, but there's a significant gap in customers' level of satisfaction with self-service options in the travel industry versus retail. It's important when looking to maximize your investment to remember four things. Make it easy create seamless experiences, ensure you're providing value, and deliver the basics in a new way, right? No, nothing too surprising there, but, but really, it, it is about keeping it simple. Keep that customer first. Um, so, so to sum things up, uh, it's really about empathizing. You know, when you're implementing new customer experiences, think about it from your, your shoes, right? All of you are shoppers. Do you like getting emails every single day or multiple emails a day? Do you like when you're using your mobile device to make a quick purchase to have to go through five clicks to get through the checkout process? There are so many things that we as retailers do because we think it's good enough, but really all of those things accumulate to frustrate our customers and we really need to think about everything that we're doing from the mindset of the customer. To make a comment on the final point, um, a really brilliant guy that I know in retail said, you know, the whole purpose of our marketing campaign and our efforts are to, uh, are to care. We, we need to care about the customer, and that, that is something that Shannon talked about empathy. But, you know, even more important, he said, is we need to care, but we need to show the customer that we care. And that's a different bridge to, to cross, and if you can get that across, uh, and you can get empathy across, I think you'll be successful. So let's give Shannon a hand for a terrific presentation. Thank you.